Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Yesterday there was a magnitude 4.8 earthquake, uh, 36 kilometers west southwest of Stovepipe Wells, California. This was not far from Ridgecrest and the Walker Lane Fault Zone. Using Google Earth, here's the location of that 2.9 and I'll bring this out for you. Over here is Ridgecrest. And of course, this is all the area for the Walker Lane Fracture Zone. So far, there's been 25 earthquakes that USGS is reporting in this location. The largest being a 2.1, a 2.3, and a 2.9, two 2.4s. And we'll bring it down a 2.8, another 2.4, another 2.1. According to an article published on the Los Angeles Times, a new study published in the Bulletin of Seismological Society of America, says there is now a 2.3% chance of an earthquake of a magnitude 7.5 or greater in the next 12 months on a section of the 160-mile-long Garlock Fault, and that there is a 1.5% chance of a large earthquake being triggered on the San Andreas Fault sometime in the next year. Evidently, you see ERF3, there was a 2, but they got a new report out about the probability of earthquakes there in California. Recent events demonstrate that earthquakes can rupture beyond previously understood fault boundaries, resulting in a much larger fault rupture area and a magnitude that, than expected. Scientists now recognize that faults are not isolated, but instead are often interconnected in a broad network or fault system, where multiple nearby faults can occasionally rupture simultaneously, unlike previous models. Now, according to their computerized supercomputers, is what they used, analysis of the Southern California area, they say that the model estimates a greater increase in the likelihood of larger earthquakes in the Los Angeles region compared to most of California because the region has more faults and can host, host multiple fault ruptures. I've talked about how one earthquake um, can trigger an uh, earthquake on an adjoining fault. And they have an image. It says here, figure one, a three-dimensional perspective view of the likelihood that each region of California will experience a magnitude 6.7 or larger earthquake in the next 30 years. And they have a probability of which faults will probably rupture uh, with a magnitude 6.7 or greater uh, within the next 30 years. we got the Hayward Fault, the Calaveras Fault, uh, and the Southern Andreas Fault. And I've talked about this location down by the Salton Sea. Um, it is way overdue by about 300 years. Also on this paper, they have a magnitude greater or equal to, and they got 5, 6, 6.7, 7, 7.5, and 8. You know, 100% chance within the next 30 years of a 5, um, a 6, 100% chance, a 6.7, 93 a 7, 75% chance, a 7.5, 36% chance, and a magnitude 8, 7% uh, chance. Northern California, 100% chance for a 5 and 6, um, a 6.7, 95% chance, a 7, 76% chance, a 7.5, 28% chance. This is Northern California. Um, and a magnitude 8, 5% chance. San Francisco Bay Area. For a magnitude 8, they got a 4% chance, a 7.5, 20% chance. Magnitude 7, 51% chance within the next 30 years. Uh, Los Angeles region for a magnitude 8, 7% chance. Um, a 7.5 would be 31% chance. A magnitude 7, 40%. 46% chance, 6.7, 60% chance, and then 5 and 6, um, between 96 and 100% chance. Now, this estimate started 
the clock started ticking back in 2014. They got the Hayward Fault. Let me bring this over for you. Calaveras Fault. Uh, the northern section of San Andreas. The southern section of the San Andreas. And then they have the San Jacinto um, section. And then they have the Elsnore section of the fault. You can see here they're expecting it actually for the southern section of the San Andreas Fault Zone. I thought this was pretty interesting. And this work, um, can't really say it's done by USGS. It's done by the Uniform California Earthquake Rupture Forecast Version 3. The study was led by the USGS, um, the Southern California Earthquake Center, and the California geological survey they all put this uh, earthquake forecast together scientists do not believe that there is um, a strong likelihood of a magnitude 7 or greater happening again in the ridgecrest area but they do feel that this strain the pressure has been put along the garlock fault zone and it very well could be more pressure along different sections of the Walker Lane Fault Zone. I found another document about leveling arrays, um, different fault zones for different areas. Here we got the grapevine, and they went around measuring um, deformation for all the different areas. Here we got Owens Ranch, we got um, YMCA, um, Wallace Ranch, Ventura Avenue. Um, there is a lot of unnamed fault zones when I was looking at these different leveling arrays. You might find this paper interesting. Might like to go there and um, using Google Earth track down where these faults are at. So they may not have a seven point or greater earthquake in the Northridge area, but that does not mean that the Death Valley fault system, the Panamint fault valley fault system, or even that the Furnace Mountain Fault System, the Garlic Fault System, etc. Um, China Lake um, couldn't still have a magnitude 7 point or greater earthquake. We got here on this map um, Bakersfield, we got Fort Tijon, um, yeah, San Diego, Los Angeles, etc. And I've talked about the tectonic plate movements, how the North American plate is um, sliding southwest. And you can see all these earthquakes here. Let's bring it out here. This here is the Garlock Fault. Let me bring this out for you. That there is the Garlock Fault. And then I've talked about all the earthquakes down here in Southern California. This section here is the one that's overdue by about 350 years for a major earthquake. So if you're wondering if it's going to stop rocking and rolling, the answer probably is no. And you should be prepared for a major earthquake. So if you felt that magnitude 4.8, um, please put your information down below. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please stay safe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless y'all. Bye.